That's Christy Frost. She's a senior at Pineview, and she's been sailing for eight years, and she loves getting out on that water. I'm Colton Bazinas, and I'll have that story coming up on Game On Profiles. That boxer is Angel Speedy Gonzalez, and he's hitting hard in the ring. Angel is a new graduate from Riverview, and we'll find out about his boxing success. Mackenzie Reed is a senior at Sarasota High School, and her sport is artistic roller skating, and she's one of the best in her age group, and loves putting on her skates and working on her routines. All of those stories on this edition of Game On Profiles, and we kick off now. Six, that's six feet. You got to get out, don't walk. There you go. Hello and welcome to this edition of Game On Profiles, where you get the chance to meet some of the outstanding student athletes from our Sarasota County District High Schools. I'm Maverick Johnson. When not in school, Pineview student Christy Frost can usually be found on her sailboat. Christy is one talented sailor and she has been involved in competitive sailing since she was just 10 years old. Christy sails for her co-ed Pineview team and also competes in regattas all over the world. Our student reporter, Colton Bazinas, caught up with Christy and her sailing coach to find out about this exciting sport. Christy Frost loves to sail. She's been on the water since she was just 10 years old, and for the past eight years, she's gotten pretty fast on the waves. I think the best part would definitely be you're not just doing a sport where it's all athletic, even though it is a lot of athleticism. You also have to be fully mentally focused, and the mental game is a big part of sailing. So it's a good combination of the two. Hey, Christy, yeah. why don't you start off by circling the boat about five times? Competitive sailing is no day at the beach, but Christy has always found ways to rise above the ocean's many challenges. I think for a lot of people, the most difficult thing is staying mentally focused throughout not just focused on sailing and, not, and the race, but also not getting frustrated and being able to work back up from bad situations. Upwind, let's tack like every 10 seconds upwind. Christy's sailing coach is David Livingston, and he's been working with Christy for the past two years, and he's seen her work hard and really get in the hang of competitive sailing. I think one of the great things that I've noticed about Christy from from the first time was her level of dedication. Um, she is completely committed to the sport of sailing and on top of that an outstanding student as well. So she's really taken, taken the, the skills she has athletically, the skills that she has as a student, and she's paired them up, which is um, a really nice thing. Sailing is a thinking sport and, and an athletic sport, and she really mixes the two together perfectly. Christy goes to bind you, and she says sailing has helped teach her how to manage her time. I think it's definitely a challenge, but I've been doing sports my whole life, and time management skills is just one of those things that you have to learn. And being on the road almost every weekend, at least three weekends of the month, you learn how to work in the car and just get things done rather than just procrastinating on them. Sailing is hard work. To stay in shape, Christy runs, cycles, swims, and lifts weights. And that's all before she even gets on the boat. For training for sailing, the best training is definitely on the water. But I also like to do a lot of cycling and running, biking, lifting weights. I probably go to the gym three days a week and do biking and other, or running another three days a week and I'm on the water probably 
four days a week. So it's a lot. Thanks to Sarasota's warm climate, Christy is able to train all year round, which is good because it gives her an advantage on the water. She is by far the hardest working sailor out here. Um, she gets here early. She's uh, ready to go whenever, whenever the coach is ready to go. And, and uh, she's fully committed to, to uh, being the best. And you know, sailing is, a, is uh, a, a sport that requires very minute levels of, of uh, improvement and when you start doing little things they start adding up and she really puts the time in for those little things which increases boat speed, increases tactics on the race course and uh, she's, she's just, she puts it all together very nicely. Christy definitely sees sailing in her future. She's going to sail in college and after that she hopes to join the U.S. development team and continue pursuing her passion. Reporting for Game On Profiles, I'm Colt Mazinas. Well, let's talk a little about this uh, story, Colton, because sailing, and I really didn't know there was a lot of competitive sailing, especially in school, but uh, give me your impressions. You were out off of Marina Jack there, Sarasota Bay. Uh, yeah. What was it like? Well, it's, it really surprised me. I mean, it, you, when you think of sailing, you think of kind of easy stuff, but that's definitely not easy. There's nothing easy about it that I could see. I mean, uh, from what I, what I saw, she was working super hard, and it's not just on the water. It's everywhere and all the time. It's an all-the-time thing. You know, it was interesting in your piece was just some of the physical things that she had to do, very demanding it seemed, and at the same time she and her coach both talked about the mental aspect of it. Is that something, and I know you, you love the water, but sailing isn't something you really know a lot about. Was it really evident, uh, both the physical and the mental uh, things you need to be able to do to become a, a good sailor? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, when the sail comes around, I mean, you really got to keep that, keep your head on a swivel, see when and the waves and and so I imagine that you really do have to keep concentrated. And she, she said that she uh, listens to music a lot to keep her head kind of concentrated on what she was doing. And uh, she said that that really helps her. So I'm curious, you, somebody that likes the water, not really being exposed to sailing in particular before, your impressions, is that something that you would like to maybe undertake at some point? Or was it way too much uh, for you uh, with just being exposed to it for the first time? Well, I'd love to try it sometime. It looks like it's really, really fun and really rewarding. I could tell. It's definitely like uh, something worth checking out sometime. Now, it, what was really fascinating to me is what she does to stay in shape and to keep sharp. Obviously, there's a mental aspect. So she's got to handle schoolwork, and she says it's helped her with time management. But she runs, she cycles, she swims, she weight trains. And obviously, you saw the uh, the need for all that kind of training in watching her practice the other day, right? Oh, definitely. All right, well, let's talk a little about down the next step. I didn't realize this, but she's going to be able to sail in college, huh? Yeah, definitely. She's, uh, she's looking at a marine college where she can specify and be on the team and uh, definitely kick some butt. Wow. Well, that, just a great story. I love doing these extra sports. Thank you for the great job in the story, and maybe we'll see you out there on the water, all right? All right, all right we got more Game On Profiles in a minute. Stay with us here on the Education Channel. That's Angel Speedy Gonzalez. He just graduated from Riverview High School and has had a great year in the ring. I'm Pete McClellan, and I'll have that story coming up on Game On Profiles. Mark! Anna! Ah, 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 ah. Woo! Hey, hey, we got your lunch. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Because kids in foster care don't need perfection. They need you. Welcome back to Game On Profiles, I'm Maverick Johnson. For our next story, the sport of boxing is not for everyone. Some start out and when they finally get the chance to get into the ring, determine that maybe another sport might be better for them. Not true for our next athlete, Angel Speedy Gonzalez. He was introduced to the Sarasota Boxing Club by a friend and what he found was a place that he could really work and also find success. Angel graduated from Riverview High last June 
and this new grad says he plans to continue working on boxing and going to school. Our student reporter Pete McClellan talked with Angel and his trainer and found out about a young man truly dedicated to his sport. Angel Gonzalez, a new graduate from Riverview High School, has been boxing at the Sarasota Boxing Club for the past three years. And even though he participates in one of the toughest sports there is, Come back for two. he loves every bit of it. The, the sweat, the running, the physical contact one-on-one -on -one is the best. Angel got started in boxing because of his friend, but has stayed with the sport because of his family and especially his dad. My father, he always loved boxing and I guess I took over from him. Been there through all my fights from the first to the last, and he's al he always will be. So he's always there, always there encouraging me. Uno, dos, dos y dos, dos y dos. Harold Wylan is Angel's coach and trainer, and he knows the impact Angel's father has had on his son's performance. Well, as a person, I saw that he was a quality person. He had a quality upbringing that came across really fast. Uh, he was uh, polite, well-spoken, and respectful, and that's a good start for any athlete. Angel has been influenced by his father and his coach, but his fellow fighters helped keep him in the ring. It's great, we got the best boxers. Matter of fact, we have pros in here, which I do sparring with, great training with, and they're the ones that keep me in tip-top position. Angel has endured rigorous workouts to perfect his skills. Developing quick hands and quick feet is something Angel prides himself on. Speed kills. That's why I can say, if I'm faster than the guy, I'll catch him. 70% of boxers are right-handed, but Angel is a left-handed boxer. His left-handed punches leave right-handed boxers baffled, leading to an impressive 12-2 record this year. I'm southpaw, left-handed, so I always confuse my right-handers with my left and my stance and my movement. All of Angel's talent, his natural ability, and what he has developed would all be wasted if he didn't give 100% every day. Will is, a, is a, a tremendous strength and athletes are often measured on their technical qualities but perhaps more important than skill is will and he has a very strong will. He has a lot of heart as they say in boxing. Angel's performance has attracted a lot of attention and even though he has decided to stay an amateur boxer for this next year, his coach sees a promising future for him in the professional ring. Well, I, I think he's headed towards being a professional boxer, perhaps later this year, maybe later than that. There's no rush in that. And um, I think he could be uh, a very fine professional boxer if that's what he really wants to do and that's what he says he wants to do. Reporting for Game On Profiles, I'm Pete McClellan. All right, people, let's talk a little bit about boxing in general. You know, just graduated from high school. Uh, I know you're probably familiar with boxing. Had you been, seen someone training, kind of sparring up close before like this? I've never seen uh, sparring in person, and what I can tell you is that he was definitely working very hard. It was a lot, lot more intense than I was expecting. Give me uh, your impression. You got to see him spar. You got to see him work the bags and that kind of stuff at high rates of speed. Uh, just uh, the speed of the sport, for someone that's not there, uh, when sometimes when you see something in person versus on TV, there's, there's a different element to that. Can you kind of take us to, into that uh, maybe a little bit? Well, I can tell you whenever I see it on TV, it does seem like there's a lot of separation and not going 100% the whole time. But in, when he's sparring and in person, he's definitely going 100% given everything he's gotten and a lot of speed to it. Now, we, we always, uh, you know, associate boxing with, uh, you know, obviously the physical aspect of the game, and that's evident. But you were telling me uh, a little bit about the piece and uh, mental uh, approach to boxing is as critical, if not more critical, than the physical element. Talk me to the, about that a little bit. Yeah, Angel definitely focused a lot on the, uh, the mental aspects of it, saying it was, I think he said it was 90% mental. And, you know, it, anyone can sort of train and be at that, at that peak uh, physical body, but having the mental mindset of going into, uh, and going into the ring is takes a lot.
You brought it up in your piece, and I thought it was interesting. I just wanted you to maybe expound on a little bit more of the element of being a left-hander versus a righty-dominated sport. Obviously, in society, right-handers dominate uh, everything. Everything's kind of curtailed to a right-hander. But as a lefty in boxing, uh, watching it, maybe getting a little bit of an idea on the finer elements of boxing on the technical side, could you really then learn how that the left-handed thing can benefit Angel? Well, I would say for, for the most part that... The trainer, when you're training as a right-handed boxer, you're training against other right-handed boxers. So you're, it's just the uh, you're not used to having someone focusing with their left hand on like when you're in the match. So just being able to use your left hand as the dominant hand just throws the right-handed boxers off. Well, just a great story uh, kind of brought us in there, and I appreciate you doing such a great job on it. Thank you. All right, we got more game on profiles in a minute. Stay with us here on the Education Channel. That's Sarasota High School's senior, Mackenzie Reed, and she's outstanding on skates. I got no balls, so losing. Shocking throws at road all the time. Just had a few drinks. It just can't be happening. Are we clear? Clear. We just buzzed. Just buzzed? You didn't tell us that, sir. You're right. This isn't happening. He'll be fine. Eh, I feel good. Really? No, not really. Buzz driving. Maybe we should stop acting like it's no big deal. I hope you find a home. I hope you find a home. Hey, maybe you'll be picked next. Maybe you'll be picked next. We've been caged together too long. We've been caged together too long. How come nobody ever picks me? Maybe they're looking for somebody different. Pick me. Well, the shelter's closing up for another day. We didn't get picked. I know. Tomorrow. Guaranteed. Welcome back to Game on Profiles. I'm Maverick Johnson. For our final story, have you ever seen the sport of artistic roller skating? Well, you're about to, as we found one Sarasota High School student who has been competing in the sport almost as long as she could walk. Mackenzie Reed can be found at the Stardust Skate Center working on her routines and skating to get to the level that she demands of herself. Our student reporter, Kelly Aulis, talked with Mackenzie and her coach and found out about artistic roller skating. That is roller skater Mackenzie Reed, who truly believes that this sport was made for her. I, I've always been in love with this sport. My mom's the coach, so I've always been like brought into skating, and it's just something I love to do. So I've been doing it my whole entire life. Mackenzie has practically been at the rink since she was born, and she continues to improve because of all those years spent on skates. Well, my mom was actually the coach, so she just brought me one day, and then. I just skated around and I loved it. Unfortunately, a lot of people aren't aware of artistic roller skating. Mackenzie says it's similar to ice skating, only a little harder. It's just like ice skating, but I think it's actually harder because our skates weigh more and we do a lot different stuff than ice skating, but we don't get as much credit as ice skating does, but it's the same exact thing, just a little harder. Mackenzie loves everything about roller skating. She enjoys competing at nine competitions throughout the year and has made lifelong friends. I just love the competitions and all the friends I've made throughout skating and stuff. And I just really love the competitions. Are you ready? Yeah, Warmed up enough? Mackenzie's roller skating coach, Dawn Reed, is not only her coach, but also her mother. Her mom enjoys being able to coach her daughter even when things get tough. Sometimes it could be really great, honestly, but then we have our moments because um, Kenzie tends to be a perfectionist and I always tell her that she does not need to be perfect as long as she's trying her best, but she wants to do well so badly that sometimes we have that little conflict, you know. 
Through roller skating, Mackenzie has been able to travel around the world and has learned important values and discipline. If it wasn't for skating, um, she's a good girl, um, you know, no smoking, no drugs. You know, she's just, I think, a really good person. She does great in school. She knows um, structure. She's disciplined, obviously. And, you know, just really proud because she needs, I mean, I think every child needs to be in something. And this has just kept her grounded and on the right track. Mackenzie has been competing in skating all of her life and has had the opportunity to travel all over the world. This year, she hopes to go to Brazil and compete in the World Championship. Well, this year, Worlds is in Brazil, and I want to um, get a really good placement, like hopefully maybe place in the Junior World Class Singles. That's my goal. <laughs> Most high school seniors are getting prepared to move away in a year and attend college, not Mackenzie. She plans on staying at home and going to the State College of Florida and keep skating. I'm just thinking of going to like SCF because I don't know what I want to be yet and then I'll still be able to skate because I'll be in Sarasota with the rink. <laughs> so I'm just going to go there and try to find something to do because um, I don't know what I want to be yet. Mackenzie Reed is a determined young lady who has a unique talent. She practices four hours, five days a week, and she is ready to reach her goal. We wish Mackenzie the best of luck as she competes throughout the year. Reporting for Game On Profiles, I'm Kelly Ellis. All right, so Kelly, let's talk a little about skating. Uh, you were at Stardust. Do you roller skate? Um, I don't, but I have before. I've been to Stardust, so I've done the whole skating thing. Now, what about ice skate? Have you ever had ice skates on? Yeah, I've been, uh, I've been ice skating once. Now, we all have seen, obviously, competitive ice skating because of the Olympics and such. Uh, your impressions, you've had ice skates, you've had roller skates on, obviously not doing the competitive thing here. But uh, just what you were watching there, uh, can you even relate to the difficulty of that and what she's going through? No, I honestly can't just because, I mean, to me, it was so hard just like skating around for fun. So I couldn't even imagine doing all the tricks that they do. And um, I don't know, it seems intense, all those spins and twirls. like. I don't know. It just seems very hard in my opinion. Now, I've had skates, both roller and ice skates on, as have you. Uh, and Mackenzie was teaching us, you know, that roller skating even a little more difficult because the skates are heavier. And I'm thinking as I'm watching your piece, absolutely they are. So I can't even imagine doing some of that stuff. And I'm sure you can have a similar experience, even though not doing it competitively, how much more difficult it would be with the roller skates. Yeah, I completely agree. They're both very difficult for me. And I think that even like the skating rink for just roller skating isn't as like slippery as like the ice is. So I feel like that'd be another difficulty that I would not want to take That's on. a great point as well. <laughs> now you were telling me you really like the fact that mom is her coach. Yeah, I think that's awesome. I don't know. I kind of envy that because um, I don't know, I've never had a sport where my mom could be my coach, and I just think that that builds a relationship that not a lot of moms and daughters get to have. Absolutely, I completely agree with you. And one of the cool things I guess I wanted to end on was the ability that the skating, competitive artistic roller skating, has given her to travel the world at such a young age as she's training for Worlds in Brazil this year. That's just an amazing opportunity. Yeah, this artistic roller skating has really opened so many doors for her. Um, not a lot of kids at all have been able to travel like the amount that she has. She's she's really hoping to go to Brazil this year, but she has traveled all over the world in past years. So she's a lucky girl. Well, just a great story. Thank you for bringing it. Another great athlete. We've got more Game On Profiles in a minute. Stay with us here on the Education Channel. percent of businesses never recover after experiencing a major disaster. Make a plan at ready.gov slash business. everywhere are finding ways to keep kids active and healthy. Works every time. Get ideas, get involved, get going at letsmove.gov.
Well, that'll wrap up this edition of Game On Profiles. We want to thank all of our student reporters for their fine stories. For all of us from here from Game On Profiles, we thank you for joining us. I'm Maverick Johnson. Game on! Get out, man.